So before you decide on what strategy you want to adapt for the patient, first you should know which structure is involved. So basically, you will have to know whether it is a normal lung ventilation or is it a diseased lung ventilation. Even in the lung, suppose it is a normal normal lung meaning it can be a CNS problem, traumatic brain injury, or it can be neuromuscular weakness. Where the lung parenchyma, the airway as such are good. There's nothing wrong in that. But you are ventilating for airway protection, like they are not able to cough well or they are not able to handle secretions. So for that you are able to ventilate. So that is the anatomical structure involved, whether it is CNS, respiratory, or cardiac cause. The nature of the disease process. Suppose you have identified that it is a parenchymal problem. I mean, if it is a lung problem, in that you will have to identify whether it is a problem in the airway or if it is in the parenchyma. So, because depending on that, you will try to ventilate the patient. So, these are the things you will have to look into before you put any child on ventilator. Which organ is involved? And in that organ, especially if it is a lung, which part of the lung is involved? So, first nature of the disease process. So, it is an, in the lung, whether it is an airway problem, if it is a parenchymal problem, or is it a chest cage problem? So, what is the underlying physiology? So, if it is a lung problem, you will have to know whether it is a compliance problem or a resistance problem. So, compliance problem meaning. It is involving the lung parenchyma, like ARDS, pneumonia, pulmonary edema. If it is a resistance problem, it is usually either asthma in children or COPD in adults, or it can be even be upper airway obstruction. So the most important concept to remember is the com component of time constant. As you all know, the time constant formula is compliance into resistance. So if the lung compliance is good, that means the lung is very good. If the compliance is low, the compliance formula is change in volume per unit change in pressure. Suppose your volume improves by a minor change in pressure, that means it is a very good compliant lung. Suppose there is not much change in compliance, I mean, if the child volume, despite change in good pressure, that means it is a poorly compliant lung. So, this formula is time constant compliance into resistance. So the time constant in other way can be defined as so how long it takes for the air I mean the air to go into the lungs. For example, in one time constant, 63% of the lung gets inflated or deflated. So by three time constants, 95% of the lung gets inflated or deflated. So by five time constant, around close to 99% of the lung. Is able to air is able to enter the lungs, so that's what is important. So time constant is very important concept and helps you in determining your inspiratory time. So that's what is important here. Yes. So in normal conditions, your time constant will remain normal. So even uh, like uh, if you are ventilating for a CNS problem, like for severe traumatic brain injury or meningitis or for GBS. The time constant will be normal because your compliance and resistance is normal. In obstructive problems like asthma or COPD or any upper airway obstruction, the resistance goes high. So because of that, the time constant, which is a product of compliance into resistance, again goes high. So in restrictive problems or in, a, or in other words, where there is a problem with the compliance, the time constant goes down. So in a way, how you can remember is. If the time constant is high, it will help you in setting up the expiratory time. Suppose you are, see in asthma, all the air is trapped inside the alveoli. So you want it to come out. So it takes three time constants for the air to come out, 95% of the air to come out. So if you keep the E time little higher, so since the time constant is high, it will help in deciding your E time. So you keep the I time as shorter and expiratory time as longer. So by the way, all the air will be able to come out. So similarly, pneumonia and ARDS, the compliance is low, so your time constant is low. So your E time will be low. So which means your I time will be higher. So that's why in ARDS and severe pneumonia, your inspiratory time is longer. And that's why in asthma, your expiratory time is longer. 